Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's. Our first hymn this morning is hymn 182. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118. Let us read it responsively by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but, has, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and is, and is marvelous in our eyes. On this day... The Lord has acted. 
We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading is from the book of Acts. Peter began, Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by him as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. In the word of the Lord. just as Jesus 
rose from the dead on Easter Day. We need to resurrect ourselves, our families, our friends, our communities, our children, our country, our economy, our world. We need to come back to life from this terrible tragedy. Death hangs over us like a shroud, and we are afraid, and we look forward with hope and fear that sometime soon we may return to normal. Let's go back for a moment to that Easter morning when Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to the tomb, went to Jesus' tomb. We know that those who loved Jesus the most, his disciples, were in hiding, in isolation. They were fearful of being arrested and put to death because of their association with Jesus. Peter had denied that he even knew Jesus. Judas had killed himself. They didn't know what to do or what the future would hold. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had to go to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body for burial. There was no one else who could do it. There was no one else who could take care and make sure he was buried properly. This mother, who had lost her son, was tasked with carrying out this responsibility. They say there is no greater tragedy than a parent losing a child. She was in the midst of grief, having lost her son. But when she arrived in fear at the tomb, she was met by an angel and she was told that Jesus was not there. Listen to these words from the Gospel again. Do not be afraid, the angel said. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene left the tomb to go and tell the disciples what they had been told, and on the way they met Jesus. They themselves had not been resurrected, the disciples had not been resurrected, but they had witnessed Jesus' resurrection. For them, life would go on as it had before he was crucified and rose from the dead. Their resurrection was to come in the future. It was a promise that had been made by Mary's son, but they had to live in the present believing in that truth and carry on their lives despite their fear, despite the disciples' fear for their lives and Mary's grieving over the loss of her son. Life had not changed for them in this world. What had changed was their future with God, their eternal future. They now had been tasked with the responsibility of going into the world and telling the world that this promise had been made by God, that all who believed in God through Jesus Christ would receive eternal life. That no matter what would befall them in this world, God would protect them and grant them eternal life. And so we find ourselves like the Marys and like the disciples in fear and isolation. We again witness and remember the resurrection of Jesus. And we are now tasked, tasked with the responsibility as the people of the risen Christ to go out into the world and to resurrect our world and make it new. We who hold the hope and the knowledge that God will redeem this world from all its troubles and death must be an instrument of God's peace to bring this world back to life despite all the tragedy 
that surrounds us. We believe in the risen Christ. We believe in the power of the resurrection. We believe that this tragedy will come to an end and that life will return to normal and that we once again will be the people of the risen Christ in a world that is safe, in a world that is free from such a terrible pandemic, in a world that is coming back to life. We live in hope. We are fearful for the future, but we are the people of hope, the people of God's peace. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, be with us all. Lord God, help us to see that you are with us in, the, in this moment of suffering. Help us to see that the future is bright, that there is hope, and that all who are ill, all who suffer, all who have died, will be with you in eternal life. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you.
incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Let us pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing your people to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Patrick and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together the words that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us.
gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.